Love one another. Forgive one another. Be kind to one another. This phrase, one another, is used in the scriptures over and over again. More than a hundred times, the New Testament encourages us to be in life with one another. It reminds us that we're not meant to do life by ourselves. You are not meant to do life by yourself. I am not meant to do life by myself. We are meant to do life with one another. As we get started with this brand new sermon series, One Another, I'm going to ask you today to begin to think about who are the other, the one another's in your life. It seems to me that there are probably four categories of one another's in our life. So those, uh, the first group might be those, those people who are the closest to us, our, our immediate family, uh, maybe our spouse or our children or our parents or brothers and sisters. Th- those people we see on a daily basis or we talk to on a daily basis. Who are those one another's in your life? The, the next group might be uh, a group a little bit removed from them, but there are close personal friends. People we enjoy spending time with. Maybe we go out to, to dinner with them or go to a concert with them or, or spend time at their house watching a football game or setting out on the back deck. And th- these are incredibly important people in our lives. We have a special relationship with them. Uh, they mean things to us and hopefully we have uh, an important role in their lives as well. The, the next group is, is a little bit further removed from us. They're, they're uh, maybe people we work with. Maybe it's a, a next door neighbor. Maybe it's someone, uh, a parent, who's on my son's uh, softball team and I see them uh, every once in a while. They, they, we know these people, they're acquaintances. Uh, we don't intentionally spend time with them, but when we are with them, we enjoy that time together. We enjoy uh, being together. We enjoy the conversation. We enjoy uh, the thing we have in common, our children being involved in something together or being at work together. The final group is, I would say, everyone else. The, the, the people that, that we don't know, the clerk at Hy-Vee or at the gas station, the person who's in the lane next to you at the stoplight, It might even include people that we don't care about that much. Here's my question for you to think about all through this entire sermon series. What is your role in the lives of these individuals? What is your your role? Why has God given you the family that he has given you? What is he want for you to do in their lives? How, how can they be a blessing to you? And then that next group, your, your, your good friends. Why are these people your friends? Why, why do these uh, people gather around you? Why do you enjoy spending time with these people? What does God w- want to use you to be a blessing in their lives? And how can they be a blessing in your life? Because we were called to live with one another. And then even those last two groups, acquaintances and people we don't don't even really know. What is our role in their lives as we live out our life as followers of Jesus? How has he called us to love and to serve and to forgive the one another's of our world? I want to take a few moments to look at Philippians chapter 2 today. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul writes these words, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion. I love those opening words of Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ. And think about that. You and I, we're united with the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because of something we've done, not not because we're special, not because we're holy, uh, not because we attend church, we're attending a small group Bible study uh, today. No, we are united with Christ because the creator of the world loves you, loves me, loves his creation 
so greatly, so grandly, that he willingly left heaven, came and lived a perfect life, and at the end of that perfect life, died the death of sinners, died the death that Pastor Lee deserves, died the death that you deserve. And then as he ascended into heaven, he sent back his Holy Spirit to create faith in us. And his Holy Spirit gives us faith to believe that he is the Messiah, the only Son of God, our Savior, our Redeemer. And in that faith, we are united with him. Jesus made us his one another. If you have any encouragement for being united in Christ, it says, then if you have any comfort from his love, and man, what comfort the love of Jesus brings to the children of God. Comfort knowing that our sins are forgiven. Comfort knowing that we have an eternal resting place with us, with Jesus in heaven. Comfort knowing that he is with us every day. Never will he leave us. Never will he forsake us. Folks, I want you to understand as we join, begin this sermon series, one another, that the cornerstone of your life, the, 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 the bedrock, the foundation in which we live is our reality that we are the sons and the daughters of God. We are Jesus, one another. That is what marks out our life. It's what gives us meaning. It's what gives us purpose. It, it, it changes the way we look at life, the way we consider life, our, our priorities, our objectives. Our identity, your identity, is found first and foremost in that you are Jesus, one another. A little bit later in the same passage from Philippians chapter two, Paul says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourself, not looking out for your own interest, but to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be taken advantage of. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being found in human likeness, and humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, Consider others better than yourself. Folks, that's exactly, that's exactly what Jesus did for us, right? Even though he's the son of God, the creator of heaven and earth, had, had a perfect place for him in heaven for all eternity, he did not consider himself better than us. In fact, he humbled himself and became just like us, was found in human form and died in our place. Jesus reminds us of the unity we have, the identity we have in Christ Jesus. And he suggests to us that our identity in Christ Jesus changes the way we look at the one another's in our life. Paul suggests that we should consider them better than ourselves, that, that we should not look out only to our interest, but in humility, we should look to the interest of one another. In humility, I should look out for the interests of my wife, Trish. I should be looking out for the interests of my, my sons, Kenny and Isaac, and my daughter-in-law, Erica. I should be looking out to the best interests of my closest friends. But not just them, I, I should be looking out for the best interests to the young lady checking me out at Walmart, or the person taking my order at the local restaurant. And even beyond that, Paul suggests in this passage from Philippians chapter two, that I should be looking out for the interests of people I don't even know. Maybe people who are opposed to me, people who are angry with me, people who don't like me. God has called us to care for one another in the same way that he cares for us and his son, Jesus Christ. Folks, as we, as we embark on this brand new sermon series and small groups study, uh, looking at some of the one another passages in scripture. I pray that number one, you realize and find your foundation in Christ and Christ alone. And number two, you realize that God has called you to serve him by serving the one another's in our life. May God bless us during this endeavor and may he fill us with his Holy Spirit to do the things that he has called us to do. 
Until next week, God bless.